let me let me tell everybody why I think this meeting is still necessary. And you're free to debate if you think this meeting isn't necessary. I think from time to time, we need to zoom out and see how is the entire community doing? How's the entire guest community doing? How's the entire partner community doing? How's the entire employee community doing? And by examining like the different levels of entry points, transformation, exit points, and advocacy, we can begin to understand that better. Um, because we're working at SPP and operations every day, we can get locked in to seeing things from only the ground perspective. So I think this is a good way to open up. But the value of this particular meeting, really I think about it is this, it's a list of actionable ideas that we're gonna do after we have this meeting. If we don't have any really actionable ideas from this meeting, there's probably no reason to do it. And as I said before, we don't make, need to make this meeting really large. Most of the people that you saw come in, in the previous times didn't really have any ideas anyway. So it's not really, I think, vital to have their presence if you're not going to add any ideas. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. Let's see the stats and run down what the uh, different figures are. Okay. Before we begin then, while Ara is getting that set up, does anybody have a different opinion about the utility of this meeting? Let's go over to Lilith, your side. It's the partner squad. Think up. Hello, sir. Uh, yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, Lan Claire. Hi, Lilis. Hello. Sorry, uh, I'm actually outside. So for this meeting, I think this is still uh, needed since we need to review our general strategy. Like from the last um, meeting, we decided to do um, uh, focus also on the partner retention and also improving the quality of our relationship. Okay. Uh, I think it's going improvement, and yes. uh, if we have that meeting, we do not have uh, any clear direction on what should good. we do in okay. the next Okay, good, good. So it is here to create strategic purpose and point the ship in the right direction then. Okay, good, Lilith. I'm happy to hear that it's working well. Um, one more thing, a general announcement. We are probably going to have the opposite problem that we've been having for the past half year in the next half year, okay? So what do I mean by that? In the past half year, we had not enough people and maybe too much work, right? Now, I think we're going to, uh, with the end of this MBCon batch, and it, it seems like there's a lot of really well-qualified people, we're probably going to have the opposite problem. We're going to have a, a lot of people and maybe not enough work, actually. So this can be a good time to think about your prioritization and expand the prioritization. For the past six months, we've been uh, forced, based on limitation of resources, to prioritize only what is most essential to keep Bukit Vista thriving, right, and surviving. But I think in the next six months, we're going to get, like I said, so what I'm seeing is this, for example, on SPP. Is there a possibility to run SPP faster, right, or include more particular dimensions to SPP? I'll give you an example. So. Uh, we recently contracted and brought on board an architect who's going to be beginning work on Monday um, as a consultant. Okay, so what her job is to do is to, like take a look during the SPP at what a property could do to improve itself physically so that it would attract um, a different kind of guest or a special type of guest. Okay, so this is something that we can add into a program like SPP to enhance its effectiveness. So let's say uh, there's a few properties out there. If you've been to see them recently, and uh, Katut here can probably show some oh, uh, photos. Of, oh yeah, we got Katut hooked up. Here, here, here's a new innovation too as well. Katut, you can show everybody your new tool here, right? We got Katut hooked up with an iPad now. So I think that should be able to help with the inspection quality. It can also bring uh, maybe live streaming through Discord of a particular property. So if you wanna see what it looks like, Katut could probably walk you through and show you the, the, the bits and pieces, okay? Um, okay, these are all just ideas of how we can now, with the new resource that we're gonna be receiving in the next month, uh, utilize more creativity to expand what we were able to do before, okay? So those are just a theme that I want to, to explore. All right, Vidi, welcome in. How you doing, sir? Okay, um, let's turn it over to Ara and let's begin. Oh, 
Okay, let's go ahead, start, uh, go ahead and start looking at the top of this discussion. So the first set should be on awareness. Awareness. Okay, over to Gani. <coughs> uh, good afternoon, everyone. So for the uh, awareness, um, okay, for the last dependency. Oh, yeah, uh, in the beginning of the month, uh, because on June, we got uh, 11 leads per month. But uh, unfortunately, and this month in July, we only got four. So I, I think uh, uh, not uh, meet with the expectation in the beginning of the month. Uh, and then the second one, find the SEO expert. Okay, uh, we have been trying, me and Mr. Zing, to find the candidate through LinkedIn, but no one in pass yet. And the last is developing Google Ads. Yes, uh, I believe uh, Garrett uh, already improved some of the uh, Google Ads uh, uh, suggestion. Uh, and then for if you guys uh, want to take a look at the action plan for August, uh, I, I have attached on the uh, the atas on the yes that one. On the can you open expand it and then see in the comment. I think okay, nanti aja kan nih. Oh, oh oke. Okay. Oh, okay. by one per chapter, but this one is to rescreen about the actionable that is done or not being done yet. Jadi we want uh, we take a look for apa briefly about the actionable whether it's done or not gitu. And then later on we will discuss in details. Correct. Oh, okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Gani. A few pointers. Um there's a friction on my side. We actually have gotten a response back from Ryan. Ryan is one of Tommy's best students. He already wrote back to me last Friday. Uh, but I've been really busy handling the operation, so I haven't had a chance to get back to him. Uh, Ryan has scheduled a time with us on three days where he can meet and consult with us. Can I just send this over to you right now, Ghani, and you can arrange the um, the time with him, okay? Uh, I'll send this to you right now, Ghani. His name is Ryan Mason, uh, oh, and I'll so forward this to you. You can set up a time that you want. Uh, Ryan is based out of New York, so he's about... Oh. 12 hours away from us. So any meeting he thinks is probably better, Gunny, in the morning at about 8 a.m. our time, or I think in Jogja that would be about 7 a.m. Uh, your time, okay? So in the meantime, I think you already have some pretty good direction right now to go from based on what I saw Adil and Gareth are doing. The technical SEO on our website has been something that we really paid attention to. We paid attention to the link. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I, I dropped out there for a second. All right. Uh, Ghani, I think this particular segment can be done like this, right? In the very beginning, we we're hoping to get an SEO consultant to tell us what to do. But Adil and Gareth have already figured out what we need to do. We have an F right now in our page speed loading. So our technical SEO is very poor. They've already suggested a number of ideas by using new picture formats and such of how we can fix this. I think this is really good to just start work on that right away, okay? And in the meantime, we can wait for this SEO consultation to see if there's any additional uh, things we can do. So don't stop the action. We already know that this action will improve the search engine optimization. Okay, number two. So I understand that our lead generation rate is less than 50% of the previous month. Is that correct, Gotti? Yes, yes. Okay, right. And the last time I checked, I remember, I think I compared a month to month and I think our organic rate went down. But when we did a recent check, we saw that we were number one now for Bali property management. And I think number three for Bali villa management, which is actually pretty good. I think uh, for Gareth and Adil, I need you guys to map out essentially what the realm of what's possible is, okay? We've been pursuing these two keywords, Bali property management, Bali Villa Management for a very long time, for the beginning of Boogie Vista history. Are those the most valuable keywords that we can target? Are there other keywords we can target? Okay. The reason I bring this up right now, it's a little bit like a blind search right now. Um, it's like we're pioneers, but we have not mapped out what the size of this region looks like. I think the very first thing we need to do, Ghani, in order to lead your team well, is to define what is the potential benefit of getting all the keywords for search that a partner can find us by, right? For example, it might be there's 500 searches every month on Bali Villa Manager, 600 searches on Bali Property Manager, whatever. 
but I would need to get an idea of, let's say, the top 10 keywords and how much potential search activity is happening on those keywords. Then, uh, gentlemen, I think then we can start having goals of how much of that total search volume we want to accomplish, right? Do we want to get 50% of that? Do we want to get 60% of that? Do we want to get 80% of that? And that way, our SEO then has, I think, a plan. We need to draw and figure out what the size of the container is, and then we set goals on how to fill that container. Okay, Yanni, that's my advice right now, okay? And the reason I give you that advice is because I think probably in July, there's not a lot of people looking for village management right now because you don't need a villain manager. You'll probably get bookings from people just walking in. But come later, September, October, November, when low season kicks in, I think that'll be a different story. So you probably need to set a container for each particular month. You might not be able to set a single goal for every month because every month most likely will have seasonality. And the seasonality might be opposite from guest booking seasonality. It might be just the reverse. When guests are most plentiful, owners do not search for us. But when guests are very, very rare, then there might be more owners looking for us. Yes, thank you, Ara, for that note. Let's have Ghani's secretary. Okay, uh, thank you, Ara, for remembering. Uh, Ghani, let's go ahead and put that into the notes, and uh, and I think we can go on, yeah, from that. Uh, let's see, who's sharing the screen right now? Ara sharing the screen. Okay, yeah, Ghani can be the secretary then, I think, in this particular case. Um, let me just double check that analysis with everybody else. Does everybody else agree that that is probably our best cor course of action? If you agree, give me a thumbs up. If you have a different statement, then just wave your hand and that way I'll know that you're either with me or you have a different thought. Okay. Okay, good, 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 good. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, Ghani, we have a lot of data scientists right now. Um, I don't know, but maybe this data collection and measurement of the total addressable market and how much we can actually achieve. That could be a good data collection, data visualization um, application, right? And that might be good. Uh, Bayou, do you think we're going to have up to like six or seven data scientists pretty soon? Um, do you think that it is wise to attach a data scientist to the marketing and awareness chapter so that they can get information like this, right? to be able to set their goals and measure their progress towards certain goals. Over to Bayou. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I think okay. uh, if we have the people, then we can do that. Okay. So uh, I think our discussion from the previous uh, uh, BI, basically on the channel manager uh, group, uh, is that we probably uh, want to refine the pricing strategy right now the pricing strategy okay. is like scattered and okay. depends on the person and the property uh, okay. but we want to create a, a basically a science uh, to uh, to do the pricing understood understood okay now let's talk about pricing by you and be specific about it. do you think pricing is an awareness or a conversion activity uh this is awareness Yes, I would agree because pricing is up there as one of the first things you would see, right? Um, okay, all right. So this is kind of interesting, Gunny. The scope of your chapter just got a little bit broader, right? So most of the awareness work so far has been around creativity, art, content, right? So now it's kind of getting into also a little bit of business intelligence, data science, and being able to figure out things like what is the right price that gets somebody to click and book, and, and increase our booking pace. Okay, so let's do this then. Uh, Vidi, we're gonna be getting new data scientists pretty early on. I think you have a pretty capable, um, no, you have you have a, you have have an elementary uh, supervisor, I think, with Felix at this point, right? He's just getting started. Do you think that you together by, let's say, creating uh, a direction then Felix by supervising can actually add pricing and perhaps a bit of data science intelligence to the way that we do awareness in the near future over to Vidi. Uh, pricing, yes. Uh, okay. For the number of, uh, the one that you mentioned previously regarding the wow. total addressable market and number of leads and all that, uh, to be honest, from all these squads, the data infrastructure for our partnership is uh, the one that lacks the data structures. Okay. Yes, and it. It. But yeah, we'll have to work on that. First. Okay, got it. Um, Felix, I get the feeling that Torek 
right now shows a lot of potential for data engineering. He's very passionate about data. He comes from a, also an engineering and computer science background. So he knows all the bits and pieces of how uh, bits move across. Uh, Felix, I think that can be a project potentially for uh, long-term benefit, right? Or wait, wait, why am I asking Felix? This is a Vidi question. Vidi, um, do you think that could be good? Essentially having Turek as one of our, our data science interns start developing a partner side data infrastructure? Uh, that would work, sir. Okay, all right, I think it's that's good. How you okay. Good, 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 good. Okay, the reason I think it'd be appropriate fit is Turek is a very high capacity candidate and I see he has a lot of energy and he's challenged by interesting projects. So I think that could be something that uh, we can set him into. Bayou, um, that scope would really improve our ability to understand partnerships, right? And essentially the partnership journey uh, with more detail. Would you agree, Bayou? Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Okay, okay, all right. Let's get data infrastructure for partners in, enhanced. Okay, so we have a potential fit there. Uh, Gunny, um, you'll be seeing more data scientists into your chapter to help you build and understand um, all the things coming in. Adil and Gareth, this should also help um, with being able to define goals and be able to analyze what's going on through ad campaigns and SEO as well. Okay, good. Um, that's good. I think that's moving in a, in a stronger direction there. So let's continue to the next thing then. Oh, by the way, did anybody have any counterpoints to my point so far with the plan and the allocation of resources for the awareness chapter? One, two, three. Okay, if there's no counterpoints and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so Ghani, essentially the direction we're gonna go into is this, right? We're gonna add, uh, hopefully the candidates pass and they accept our offers, of course. But once they do that, we can add some data scientists into the awareness to explore pricing and also explore ways of calculating and collecting data about market size for SEO and analyzing our progress on SEO in a more intuitive way. Okay, um, And all, all, all other forms of, of awareness as well. Okay, next, let's move over to conversion, everybody. Let's take a look at how things have been converting. I think on that one, we will probably rely on Kyla. Kyla, welcome. It's Kyla here. Oh, Erica. Uh, Kyla is has a meeting with uh, an owner, sir. Okay, so she can attend this. Speak on Kyla's behalf for us. Uh, okay, so currently we. Oh. Uh, so the update for uh, for business development right now is that we only achieve approaching target in our SLA right now, and we are have a. Uh, another plan to generate more leads as uh, you already mentioned in all hands before that we are going to generate more leads from another resources uh, which is from uh, user village journey and uh, right now bd has a split uh, focus we has uh, we have a lot of tasks that is not focused on sla generation which included uh, spp and also partner transformation sir okay got it so it sounds, oh, wait, let me understand what is the total target rate and how much has been achieved this month, Erica, first. Um, for for the target, mostly uh, really bad, sir, not really good. Uh, no, but no, just tell us, tell us the, the facts. Yeah. There's no judgment here. It's just, just give us the facts. Okay. So we can figure it out now. Well, wait, wait. Let me open my screen. Okay, so the percentage is where is the data okay uh we only achieve like mou 50 percent uh the uh 50 percent less decrease than the last month and uh it also happened with um another sla we i think i missed my data right here so, uh, but we still have a few a few uh, a few pitching that we scheduled uh, okay. this afternoon and also we also sent a draft for contract for another okay. properties it's okay that's all right um look there's no judgment here right we're just here to review facts so whatever the facts are just be transparent tell us what they are calm voice and we'll we'll think of a way to to get better how how many was the targeted mous and how many mous did we actually sign this month okay so the target is three and okay. we signed two mou 
two. Okay. All right. So we got about 60%, 66%, and we have four days left. And there could be a possibility we sign it. Okay. Um, okay. A few things that I heard just then. One, so you're building the user journey, which I mentioned during the all hands, which is good because I think that will expand your uh, creativity and it'll allow more people to actually start working once we have a established system. So that's that's more of a long-term plan. That probably will not fully activate until the end of August, I'm thinking, okay? Yeah. So that's a long-term plan. Um, number two, I think this one we can help with right away. You mentioned that part of your activity is to work on SPP, right? And that takes away focus from working on business development. Well, the good news, uh, Bayou, is that we should be able to send new intern candidates to probably cover what Erica and the BD team are doing for SPP. So then they can delegate their SPP duties to new candidates and they can work more on partner conversion. Would that work for you, Erica? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. I can't deliver any candidates uh, until probably mid-August. That's when MBKM actually begins. Okay. Oh, Lilis. Okay. Uh, over to you. Okay. Uh, I'd like to confirm first with Erika what kind of SPP project, uh, because what I remember is about uh, retention. So I think uh, the, the SLA completion, it can be delegated to the new person, but the SPP thinks because we need a relation in that case, perhaps it still needs to be done like, uh, by people who already understand about the current owner. So that's my question and also analysis. Uh, okay, Kali. So uh, currently, uh, the one who handle SPP is Moriana and also Han. Han help them. Uh, Han help her with the administration. Okay. Uh, other than that, we also good have. Good uh, okay. Good point there. Uh, I think we get it, Erica. So basically, because Wayana is on SPP, she can't help with BD, and that's the blocking point, right? Um, all right, Lilis, this is a tough one, because Wayana has a unique set of skills that is a little bit difficult to find replacements for. And they're useful both for partner transformation, but also partner conversion. Um, it's basically her sales and negotiation skills, right? Okay, yes, over to Erica. I think uh, it's okay with SPP for Moayana, sir, but currently uh, we also have some delegation like to help her for transformation uh, uh, for a few properties like that. So Okay, let's go over to Lilis. Lilis, these delegations that Erica is talking about, is it possible to bring a, another person to help with these? Let's say somebody who's capable in analytics and understands how the system works to help with that. Or does the current BD team need to have this responsibility within their own group? Uh, I think I'll just have a discussion with Arika, sir, because I don't really, really, really get what a transformation okay. Arika mentioned. In okay, yeah. Erica, um, Gani, let's let's put this as a sub-discussion from Erica and Lilith. What we want to get back is just a decision, okay? The decision is, can we use new candidates to help um, balance yeah. The workload all right for bd and if we put more time on bd could we actually expect to achieve the sla for the next month all right um okay so over to erica again this offline canvassing role i don't even actually know if we have an ad up for it i don't have to ask shaylin or are right, do you know uh, is this job description has it already been posted do we have it online yet yes over anybody who knows can tell me uh, it's still ongoing, sir. So we uh, BD already created the job description and the assessment for the candidate, and okay. we give this to the HR team. So okay. it's just yeah, yeah. Okay. Need to right. publish. Okay, so it hasn't been published yet. Okay, so that that means it's probably a month to two months away from actually arriving. I would not hope to get this resource until September or later. All right. Um, given yeah. the situation that our HR team is not really good at hiring from within Bali. I would I would not put too much hope on getting an offline canvasser at the moment, okay? Um, we have better luck probably repurposing Katut to be an offline canvasser, but we can't do that. Uh, okay, all right, so that's that's that. Um, let's continue then. Okay, 
Um, if you guys believe that that is the best way that we can allocate resources for the conversion team, give me a thumbs up. If you have another idea, wave your hand and let me know. Yeah? Okay. All right. Okay. So this will come down to the discussion between Lilis and Erica. Yes, over to Ara. I wonder why there is no report for conversion in the rest of the chapters for today. Or is it... I didn't see. I don't know. Like, Gani report, right? In this here. Uh, Tapi I it's conversion di mana ya? Ini kak, ini Erika. Okay, ini conversion. Terus so, um, transformation juga nggak ada. Transformation nggak ada sama advocacy juga nggak ada. Okay, that's a good point. Actually, okay, back to you, sir. Let's keep everybody on the same format so that it's easy to report. Okay, just as you saw earlier, uh, Erica was kind of going off on her own direction on reporting. This one should be actually very simple, right? It should just be okay. There it is. Number of approaches, number of first meetings versus the SLA, uh, number MQ MOUs. Okay, yeah, right there, right there. Okay, there it is. Uh, no, uh, all right, it's right there, right? I see it. for conversion awareness but transformation advocacy enggak ada sir. Oh, okay. All right. Let's go oh, let's let's go to the next next segment then. Um transformation. Over to you guys. Transformation what needs to be said? Over to I guess Lilith. Okay, uh since then is not here. What I understand with the transformation is actually First, uh, in terms of SPP, uh, it related to partner, we do contract renewal, and I think uh, some of them already done with uh, some. Uh, I don't remember how many of them for but mostly is actually room allocation. So we get more availability now uh, with some yes. property, especially Changu and then Satanita. And then uh, for PRB, uh, actually, in my analysis, this PRB helps. Um, the partner transportation, especially in expectation setting, but I cannot really, really uh, report the result. Uh, for example, good result is for Akarai. Right now, uh, I think it's improving in terms of uh, transaction and also relationship alignment. Okay. But there's also some uh, frictions that is still um, not resolved. For example, like uh, we lottery and then also with Lot six, so it yep. still needs to be improved in that way. Okay. And then last one, uh, WhatsApp group. It's also uh, already done. However, I don't really. I think uh, the the information is not really clear on how many WhatsApp. Uh, sorry, how many air support number and which number cover what area or what property. I think uh, that needs to be um. Uh, announce at least so everyone know like who okay. to reach if okay. there is a problem uh, excellent so i can text my observation with transformation excellent question okay so a few things that i'll address for lilith one at a time it seems like right now for transformation do we have a specific set of kpis that we're using to define partner transformation a few things that you just said earlier seem like good signs right Number of rooms under allocation, right? That's a good sign. Uh, partners quitting or not renewing contracts, that's a bad sign. Can we set up like a ratio even, right? Like a ratio of all the good things divided by all the bad things. And maybe that can give us an idea of what to aim for right now, okay? Lilis, you've already created that. I oh got it. We needed a title for that so bad. I keep on... <laughs> I keep on forgetting what the name is, the spreadsheet with the partners and their activity and their uh, uh, transformation. Is that still a good tool for actually determining partner transformation, Lilis? I would say it's not relevant uh, again for now. Um, and okay. I, I think uh, this week I already um, give a briefing for the BD team because the BD team is the one who is... Uh, executing the boarding and also transformation, but uh, since there is no report yet, so uh, my plan is actually to detect how many total. 
uh, partner that is doing allocation and exclusive uh, full bedroom. So I think that can show the quality of uh, transformation in this case. Okay. So, hey, uh, Lewis, I have a very, I just thought of it, just occurred to me. I have a very simple way of understanding if a partner is correctly transformed or not. It's as simple as this, okay? On the calendar, what is the percentage of, okay, okay, occupancy, right? But break occupancy down into three factors. How much total occupancy is there? Factor one. If it's a lot, then it's good, right? And then how much of that occupancy is Book at Vista occupancy versus partner occupancy, number two, right? So if there's occupancy, then we're probably on track. Partner's not going to off board with us, right? If there's occupancy yep. and it's not Book of Vista occupancy, then we're still off track and we need to get back on track again. I think that's the simplest way. What do you think, Lois? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea, uh, at least in terms of uh, transactional alignment, right? Right, right. For at least the transactional alignment. Yeah. And then for cases like Chris Cabanes yeah. and Claire, I think it should be the number of alerts that show up on the PRM, right? Uh, but then this is kind of hard to trigger because somebody has to be very sensitive in order to know that that's a trigger on the relationship fail, okay? Um, but okay, let's look at the one at a time. What I suggest is this, Lilith. I suggest that you can get together with... Um, Yes. Nadine. Nadine, you and the rest, uh, and a data scientist, right? Perhaps Vidi or Felix. I want Felix to be in this group, right? Um, let's let's get Felix, you, Vidi, and Nadine together, the four of you, okay? And I think the four of you can start defining what the KPIs are for partner transformation. We can start with the occupancy one for transaction. But I think you can actually talk to Nadine and figure out what the particular metric is for relationship, okay? And then for legacy, let's just leave legacy out for right now because it's kind of sort of sort of vacuous. So let's just say relationship and trans, uh, transaction, okay? So that's that's one. Number two, okay, the other thing, Lilith, that I'd like to inform you, and I'm so glad, I'm so happy, everybody, that we're getting operational and BI finally together because this is what I want to show you, Lilith. We have a very important document that we cover every morning in the operational team, and that is the shift delegation, okay? This table is updated every day, um, usually now two days in a row. We cover today and tomorrow's shift delegations, all right? And it goes and it gets refreshed every week. So if you are coming back on Monday, then the sheet will have been completely erased from the previous week, all right? But what you can see is you can see which air support number covers which particular regions, and you can see who is covering which particular air support for the day. I am meticulous about making sure that this is well-planned for the day because this is our, our map of understanding what needs to be done. Okay, So, Lilith, let me share this information with you right here on your Slack. Sure, sure. And, uh, oh, actually, uh, wait, I can do it for you. Uh, yeah, it's not too, too, too difficult. Okay. Uh, and you can benefit from that. Okay, there you go. Lilith, does that sound good then? So I think your allocation yeah, for yeah, resources... Yeah. Okay, absorb the data scientists, absorb Nadine, figure out what the metrics of partner transformation are. And then RS point of being able to see the transformation is valid. We need to be able to see how many partners are transformed. We need to be able to see what direction we're going in, right? And uh, I think that's good. Okay, that can be that can be my suggestion for how we, how we can improve this process. All right, um, does anybody have a different, so, uh, if, if you agree with the way that we're allocating the resource, give me a thumbs up. If you disagree, then tell me what and what we need to do instead. Okay. All right. One more thing, Lilith. Um, we are getting a lot of data scientists, Vidi and Lilith, coming through the operations. And there's some good news with this too as well. I just realized that data science work is improved when operations work is improved. I'll give you a simple example. Vidi, it's not possible right now to analyze conversations on WhatsApp, right? Yes, sir. In fact, we can't even track the guest journey on WhatsApp. We can't even track the partner engagement on WhatsApp. Is that correct? Okay. So if we can get the operations to move more into BVGo, into the application itself, using bigger on our side, BVGo on the partner side, 
would you be able to understand what partners are doing and also the guest information through the internal notes better than the way it's being conducted right now? Some quantitative data can be okay. You would know, let's say, for example, when a partner updated the room cleanliness. You'd probably know when a partner wrote about a particular situation that they were unhappy with through the internal notes. All that, I think, can be aggregated, right? And it can be analyzed much easier than on WhatsApp. Is that correct? Uh, asking today. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's correct. Sir. Uh, just yesterday, for example, we are checking the adoption rate of a partner in uh, marking the guest check-in in guest journey. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, something that's feasible if the adoption from operational okay. is good. Good. Let me ask Bayou, too, this question. Bayou, if all the communications between our side and the partner side happen on the internal notes, would that data be able to be parsed and then potentially given to, let's say, an NLP engineer and then understand what does it, it, it to understand the sentiment as as, let's say, in terms of relationship between the partner and us over to buy you. Could be. Yeah, that's probably. Okay. But okay. Uh, oh, actually, I'm not sure because uh, the language that we are using and the slang that we are using. Oh, right, right, right. But there are probably our tools that oh would it be easier if everyone communicated in english or bahasa indonesia then in that case english oh right because there's more tools to analyze english right yeah, yeah. okay understood okay hey nadia that's what i mean right by tool operation integration right so that particular case if everybody's in the habit of running in bahasa indonesia back to each other then that could complicate our ability to analyze that data later on and when that becomes a culture of that's how we communicate then we're, we, we can't build new tools on top of that. Okay, Lilis, let me come back to you. This is the way I see things, Lilis, that right now, a lot of our data is invisible because it's just happening on these WhatsApp groups, okay? But if we can get this data to be captured through our applications, through BVGo, through Bigger, then we might be able to start analyzing partner sentiment and understanding our relationship with the partner by looking at, let's say, the engagements that happen on the particular application, okay? Um, but you understand Facebook does this, right? Instagram does this. They look at your engagements and they're able to classify what kind of person you are, your persona, your habits, and that's how they actually target ads that are a good fit, right? Yeah, probably. Okay, okay. But we can't capture this data right now unless everything starts going through the application. Okay, so um, here's what I can do for you, Lois, right? Well, I can also do on this side. Um, I'm adding Nadia into our operations group so that she can start spotting these particular situations where you have a lack of data. Okay, So we're going to try to get our partners to come with us and use the applications where we can track the data points. Once we can get this, we can also provide probably more accuracy. Okay, um, What's the rate of partner engagement? What's their level of, of response and such and such that we can track through the application? Okay, That's another thing that I think can be starting to arrive sometime in early August to mid August. Okay, Lils. All right, cool. Let's keep on going then. Um, let's go to the next section for our partnership. Advocacy. There is no advocacy because nobody's been working on it, actually. So, ta da, that's that. Um, Tendi's been working mostly in supervising the operations on hosting. Um, aside from that, he's been working on making sure that properties are managed correctly with Katut and Mario. So right now we don't have any advocacy, which is somewhat of a problem. Ara, I think the first thing that we need to think about when we get, let's say, the next PR candidate to come in is how do we restart advocacy on the partner side? Bayou, I think you and I had talked about this idea the other day, right? That without some sort of advocacy for the partner side, we don't control narrative. And we don't control narrative. Partners think whatever they want to think about us, and they transmit word of mouth that is inaccurate or are malicious in some cases. Okay, so I don't think we should leave this untended for too long because it inhibits our ability to build an organic community. Um, is there anybody that is in a position to recontinue the partner newsletter? I think that was probably our best shot right now at creating a, a stronger partner advocacy.
Yes, over to Gunny. For some reason, I can't hear Gunny, but I don't see he's muted. <laughs> Anybody else hear Gunny? No. Okay. Okay. All right. How are you going? So basically, attendee uh, just uh, create like partners award video, right? And yeah. then we uh, six video, and uh, currently uh, in the uh, on the ideal uh, plate to uh edit it and then uh distribute to uh, to social media so okay. it's already on the plan but we need more story you know more ah i see we need to collect more stories leela over to you in your business analysis have you seen any inspirational partner stories of transformation something that would fit the mission and vision of the company a partner i don't know doing something really incredible for a guest or thinking about how to make their property more amazing for guests All right. Let's go to Leela first. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Leela's probably not here. Let's go over to Erica. Erica, on your side, have you found any partners that have pretty incredible stories by their own right? Um, I think I just found out one of our partners is a soldier, uh, Daniel from Tangjun. I don't know why he's in a meeting where everybody's a soldier. So uh, I, I, that could be an interesting part of how we, I don't know, talk about something to our partners, right? Um, over on your side, Erica, do you see any inspirational stories of, let's say, a particular partner who wants to build something or create something that would be awesome for guest experience? Uh, I think not yet, sir. Okay. They're there. We just haven't asked the right questions yet. Let's go to Bayou. Bayou, what about those glamping guys over in Kintamani? I'm sure they have a pretty interesting story that could probably inspire delight, right? Yeah, could be. But what I'm thinking here is that it's maybe one amazing story in 100 cases. So sure. like if we share uh, an amazing story, then uh, the question is, oh, good. You do that with that partner. Why cannot you do that for me? No, me. the partner does it for themselves, though. The partner is ready already to transform. And we're, we're, we're not going to have the, so it, it's like we're a platform, right? Like the app store or like Airbnb, we celebrate people who come and they're already ready to transform. They're ready to do things for guests, right? And we talk about how we curate and build them up and prepare them for this. That's, that's the value we add. We don't dig in and, and lift them up all on our own, right? They need to, they need to also, you know, be committed to the process as well. Uh, yeah, but that's the narrative that we get right now. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, Bukit Vista is offloading uh, the work to partners. Ah, right, 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 right. Okay, that's that's a good point, actually. But that's solid. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I have a, actually a probably better approach, and it's okay. smaller. Yes. So Tell instead me. Of, instead of uh, we are always looking at things in in batch like partners means all of our partners right we see partners as this one uh, partner okay right? so we have already a program for that like spp for example uh, spp yeah. is looking at one property right. and we do a lot of things when we do one spp for one yes property. yes and so who knows about that uh, no nobody knows. that's right right, right. Right. So what we can do is actually we we give a newsletter, a personalized newsletter for one person, right. not for all of the partners. Okay. But after we do an SPP, after we do something, we send them the report. Hey, we okay. found this, we did this, and the result okay. is this. Okay. Just Got do it. that. So this is part of the SPP. So let's say one week after the SPP is done for a property a report need to be sent to that uh, i get it partner. a document a secretary <coughs> yeah 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 a report basically right a report. So, okay. so that uh the partner can also ask themselves like let's say we have spp their property for three times but there's no result probably there's something wrong with that right so right. there will correct. be a good question uh, correct that. correct i think that's a very good approach actually by you um yeah, I think that's a better idea uh, at this moment. So something that's personalized. But 
how much work is that? That's 150 reports, right? Or how many reports a week are we talking about? No, no, no. It's three reports per day, just like the SPP. So anyone that can go to SPP can do this. Okay. We just need one new person into the SPP team. Okay. Uh, and the work is just to create three reports per day. Okay. All right. I think that is actually probably, that's the most efficient idea. That's a lot easier to carry. And that solves the problem that partners don't actually understand what we're doing. And they think that we're just sitting here, um, not doing anything. Okay. Uh, I would agree. Uh, Ara, one of the things that I have been hearing a lot about Book of Vista is this particular issue that it seems like we offload a lot of work. And I've understood it from the partner perspective because we work remote. Like, for example, this meeting is not in a room. There's nothing to see, right? If you if you go visit our office, what is this me talking to a screen, right? There's nothing actually to visualize. So because they cannot see us in the field, they cannot see us answer inquiries, it looks like nothing is actually being done, right? Um, so I think this is a good direction to create a little bit more visibility on what kind of work is actually being done for the particular partner and personalize it because then they know, oh, this is for me and not just around. And I think it's, it's a, uh, but he's right, it's a natural continuation of SPP just by the SPP work. SPP work is advocacy once it's been documented. Okay. Um, all right, what do you think about that? I think that okay. the issue is getting better since we have Mario and Ketut in the field. So that's also part of the feedback from the partners that, okay, I can see that right now people are <coughs> at, at Bukit Vista Inspect. So yeah. Okay, very good. All right, it's it's just visibility into our work. Um, let's go over to Lilis. Lilis, I think that's strong enough to be strategy at this point. So our advocacy strategy should be on what are we doing today to transform you as a partner, right? And it's just about essentially revealing that work and giving a shape and form and story behind that work, Lilis. Um, do you think that's a good direction to go to, Lilis? I think that's... Well, okay, well, I'll just ask you point blank. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I disconnected just now. My connection is lost. It's so it's okay. like uh, telling this what we do. Yeah, or... it's telling the story of our activity. Yeah, telling the story of our activity. Uh, telling the story of, let's say, how this app has been designed. Telling the story of like how your pricing decisions has been made telling the story of all the particular functions that we are putting in so that the partner appreciates it. Um, so that they don't go, this is just, you're trying to offboard work or you're trying to be lazy or something, right? Um, I think that particular understanding to the partners is absent at the moment. I think uh, that can be activities to achieve a uh, result basically. So if we would like to use that as uh, activity measurement, I think that's good. But in terms of result, I think it's still the same, like uh, how many partners are coming from. It yes. can be our services and also uh, our partner uh, word of mouth. Yes, yes, so yes. I think word of mouth transmits when there is a good story. Yes, uh, measurements yes. again. Thank you, Lois. Yeah, but I think that's the right activity. Okay. Um, I, I like it. I like it. it it's kind of like being able to see as a consumer how your product is being made. If you can see how your product is being made, you probably care more about it rather than just think it's full of cheap parts or bad ingredients. So if you can actually see the process of how it's actually being created. And Lilis, I also think that it's not gonna be additional work. It's just work that's already been done. It gets documented and then it gets sent out to the partner. So that, that's, that doesn't mean we have to complicate things and find a story writer or whatever. Okay, um, that's pretty cool actually. That's it then. Um, so, okay, uh, what we're gonna allocate for advocacy is that the newest person joining the SPP can start, ah, actually I can start this right away by you. I can send the people who do normally their HOO over to SPP to document and send these reports to partners. How about that, right? So the normal operations orientation we can put for one of the inborn candidates to go into SPP and create these reports. It's just essential now by you that I think you put this role onto the SPP so they won't forget about it afterwards, okay? Uh, would you be able to do that for us, by you, so that this role sits there and as soon as the person comes in, then we delegate that role to the newest person on the team, yeah? yeah. Okay, all right. 
I think this is a pretty good use of our allocation um, for retaining advocacy. If you agree, give me a thumbs up. If you disagree, give me a thumbs down. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Good. 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 It looks like we're moving in the right direction then. Uh, all right. Any other things that we need to take a look at right now? No, that's pretty much it. But I also saw Nadia put up reports. Would you like to yes. take a look at that? Let's take a look at Nadia's report. This is essential because we want more partner adoption of BV Go. All right, let's take a look. What's going on? Uh, Nadia, tell us what's the update on product side. Okay, thank you. Um, so, so basically on July, what have been done is that we have uh, launched the BV Go version for 1.8.0. It already update for both Play Store, uh, Android, and also App Store. Uh, so this version basically include a new partner notification, which is the check-in reminder. So we will remind the partner like a day before a guest check-in, they will receive like a notification. And the next one is regarding the partner onboarding property journey status. And the next, um, it's some bug fixes and performance enhancement, including some access limitation for staff account, right. uh, some alignment issues fixed, some looking searches issues fixed. And yeah. Okay. Uh, and not, then the next one. Yeah. Oh, oh, currently, let, let me jump into this, into the details here. Does this mean that the staff will not see the booking value on the reservations anymore? Yeah, correct. Okay, great. Okay, next question. Is this updated automatically? because I don't expect most staff to update manually, delete and update. How will this be updated? Well, this one is tricky. Um, the app should actually update it uh, automatically, but I noticed some device actually turn off the, what is it? Like the oh. automatic their, Okay. Um, store, this so this could be a problem. Let me go over to Byte. Byte. Um, when we release newer versions and better versions of the app and the staff are still using an older version, um, can we really expect them to delete and re-download again? That's not a normal behavior for most people, right? Uh, no, there's a notification, right? Uh, there's a notification if you are using the old version. If you want to up upgrade, and then that's it. That's how the app worked in the... Uh, in the in the app store, I see. Okay, to re-download uh, over to our yeah. Does does it mean that they need to re-download it? Uh, by, or they just hit update and it updates? Yeah, I'm not yeah. updating any of my apps. Right, but it's up to date, right? Because yeah. that's the setting on the phone. Uh, so that depends on on the person. Oh shit! Right, that's correct. So if you turn on auto update, then. All application on your phone will be updated if there's a new update. If no, then no. Okay, so we should probably ask Katut to make sure that all the apps are always updated. Can they select only BV Go or do they have to update everything at the same time? Like BV Go is all on their phone. Uh, there's a lot of settings on different phones. Correct. Okay, understood. Uh, all right, that was a problem that we saw with Katut at lot six, he had an older version of the app that he could see the booking value. And now, uh, Bayou, uh, Nadia, it's really awkward, right? Because Chris doesn't want him to see it because that's none of his business, but he wants to see it because he's supposed to get a percentage of each booking value. That's like, should he update? Should he not update, right? Um, real life problem, right? I'm not sure. I'm having a talk with Chris tomorrow, in fact, about this. Okay, uh, Nadia, um, somehow the screen went black now. I can't see the rest of the screen. Um, okay, let's, let's try sharing screen again. Okay, uh, one more thing, Nadia. This one, I don't know, maybe this is a PD discussion. Everybody doesn't understand the 14-hour check-in, right? Nobody understands that. Can we add 14 hours, please? Okay. Because right now what people do is this. They call in every day and they say the guest hasn't checked in. It's 2 o'clock already. And we go, well, 2 o'clock is the default time. Well, the guest hasn't checked in yet. It's 2 o'clock already, right? Can we put a certain notification or just the guest check-in time as please prepare the room at 2? The guest has not left any check-in details yet. Would that solve the problem? Why you? I think this is your, your call on this one. 
if the guest has not set a check-in time, then we say the guest has not set a check-in time, but please prepare the room at 1400 hours. Uh, we have a sign put at the property that cleaning time is one to two. Right. And check-in time is between two to any time. So the right. staff can also read that, right? Oh, I think sometimes they want to go or they have a ceremony or they want to know like if they can go to the next thing, if this thing is already done. Um, uh, no, no, we have standard. So it means that the staff doesn't follow our GX5 standard. Oh, okay. All right. So hmm. that's a good point. It could mean that. Okay. But in the meantime, uh, what, what's your solution? So people should still be confused mm -hmm. about if a guest hasn't left a correct check in time. Yes, over to Laura. I think uh, Mas Bayu already yeah. gave no info, right? But it's already checked out. Uh, I'm not really sure with the check in, but for check out, for example, it is no info. So, uh, like, uh, no the staff should expect it with this. For the check in. So then, if there's no info, then. Okay, so yeah, there, there's no problem um, anymore with, with the app or the information on the app. Basically, we say that uh, there's no check-in time information. It means you can prepare now or prepare later. That's the main problem now. So right. we need to go out there and uh, train the staff and tell them that check-in time is two. Whatever happened, uh, you need to uh, prepare it. Yeah, they know that. But then they're asking, like, what time is the guest checked into us all the time? And we say the guest hasn't given us the time yet. And they yeah, uh, them, no, don't yeah. don't answer that. Don't answer that. Please check on the uh, on on Vivigo, and then they will read it. Right? No info. Oh, oh what what's no info means? In, in oh, okay, okay, all right, okay, all right. If it's there, then it's there. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll double check to see how many people ask this this question. It gets asked every day. It's it's like nonstop. It's just, what time is guest checking? What time is guest checking? In? Okay, um, understood, Nadia. Let's go back to what you guys are currently working on then. So what's currently working on is that we are currently working to fix some bug fixing and also uh, doing some performance enhancement on the app. As well as some uh, new feature is regarding the calendar view or the blocking. So this feature will have the same functionality as Stockit, where partner can block the availability the okay. availability of your property. And this will have the two version, the mobile version of maybe can also the web version. Okay, that's incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Um, Bayou, Nadia, uh, what people do you really need now on product? You said you need some backend engineers, but um, what, what's what's the most urgent role that you need filled in order to make these progress points available uh, over to nadia okay um currently is the most urgent is actually a product owner and also a designer because i've been covering both roles um, oh currently. right 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 okay do you think the product owner is already here nadia <laughs> or is it somebody who isn't here yet which, what I mean is, do you think somebody in the company right now can actually be doing the product owner role? Um, yes. yes, I think so. No. Okay, okay. Who is that person? Uh, probably someone who actually worked closely with the partner could be. Okay, all wait, right. Wait, wait. Sub discussion, okay. Um, most likely, I think a product owner would be somebody who has used the product, understood how owners use the product, and actually, you know, have all the, all the bits and pieces there together, right? Can direct the flow of the, the product. Um, Slack me a few names that you think is possible, and I can I can delegate that. I can start, you know, the discussion whether or not to reassign these people to your side. Okay. All right. That's it. Uh, that's the recap. All right. Can you recap what Ghani has written down so far? So that everyone get, did Ghani just leave? Okay. Um, yeah, Ghani just left. All right. All right. Could you recap the, actually forget the recap. Um, just send the notes that Ghani wrote down for the allocation of everything, uh, into the Slack group so that everyone understands what the allocations are now for resources. Thank you everybody for inspiring delight for partners. We're moving in a good direction, I think. And we've, I think we can, we're now moving out from worse to good. Now we need to move from good
to better and then from better to inspirational, right? So that, that I, I see there is, there is movement in that direction. So let's continue the momentum and continue to inspire the light. See you, everyone. Have a good day.